it's ash um i just wanted to make a video talking about my experience camming um since i've been camming on chatterbait for five years a lot of people ask me questions and i don't really know what to say because there's so much that goes into it and i have so many opinions on different aspects of it that i thought i'd just make a a couple different videos talking about different topics that way I could just send them to people when they ask questions. I started right before I started college. So like right around the, my first semester of college. And it really helped me. Um, I'm just gonna get into my script that I wrote because I am bad, okay. <laughs> my genuine views on the industry <laughs> remain positive as you can choose how much and to what extent you engage with your viewers and coworkers. I really do enjoy my job. This is perhaps because I don't often do the same thing and I take long breaks in between cam sessions to rest. When I first started camming, I worked every single day. I would stream for one to two hours at a time when I had the time because I was in school. I started when I was 18. I was dancing, but when school started, I started camming. Cam really allowed me to continue my education in the way that I would not have if I was dancing. This is purely because I'm disabled and my energy levels and focus greatly differ from most people. So like a lot of people, a lot of women may be able to go to school and dance at the same time. But for me at that time, it wasn't within my capacity. After I, find, after I found camming, I became completely infatuated with the idea. I realized that like, it's kind of like your own little world and you can create um, different realities and experiment with different things with with your sexuality as well as learning about other people and how they experience their sexuality which really fascinated me um, and I could make my space into whatever I wanted and as a creative person I grew up I was raised by an artist I grew up in that energy so I have an innate part of my being that likes to create so it it really fit really well and the barrier to entry <laughs> with something like camming um you need a laptop and a webcam and an id so the barrier to entry was just like you can just start you can just start and make what you want out of it and that is something that always appeals to me like no matter the medium, like painting, whatever. Anyway, after six months of camming, I was able to buy a new vehicle. So like before this point, I had only worked, um, before this point, I had only worked fast food and like just service jobs. So like the idea of being able to get to a point that I was stable enough within six months of a new job to get a new car. That's like, that was such a big thing for me that opened so many doors. So the first few months of camming, I actually wore a mask <laughs> to cover my face and hide my identity. And I see a lot of people do this and I see a lot of people pan down, they don't show their face, which is cool. Um, this was because I wanted to work in, compu in the computer science field um, once I graduated because my major at the time was computer science and I thought this would like keep my identity hidden like from future employers and coworkers. After a few months, I stopped wearing the mask because I realized I don't actually need to be worrying myself with what hypothetical future people might think of me because that's wild. Like. Granted, I didn't even want to go into that field, like, genuinely want to. But, like, that was, like, my plan. So I didn't want to fuck with whatever my plan was. Obviously, camming has changed my plan so much, and I'm so grateful for that. 
Um, but yeah, also like the mask was super sweaty <laughs> and I couldn't wear my lashes. Anyway, through camming, I learned a lot about my own boundaries and what is healthy for me in my, in, in my IRL relationships as well. I have learned about basically all the kinks and sexual habits of humans because, well, I am some just some hot stranger on the internet to most people when they come into my cam. I'm just a stranger, so it's like easy to just trust me with this information as I don't personally know people behind the usernames. So it's really fun to hear like everybody's little things and everybody has a little thing and it's just so cute. And like, we're all so different and it's just like, it's so interesting to hear. I know like the group that I have now that visits me on cam, like we have a lot of similar interests, but I always still like at least once a show get somebody that says something I'm like, oh my gosh, or at least once a week, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never heard of that. And I'm just like always learning about different things that people have and I just, it's, I find it intriguing. There are some who have become friends, like some viewers have actually become, like I know like their real name and like, because we've been friends for so long and we're friends on Snapchat and things like that. So like things grow like closer and I, and I just think that's great. And then a lot of people just come and then leave. <laughs> and that's cool too. People regularly share overtly about their desires with me which at first was jarring, but now I'm older and I really appreciate it as it helps me do my job the best and most efficiently. Um, and it's also like a breath of fresh air. I love it. Um, I love that people are so upfront. I also get to learn about other human beings completely unfiltered, which has added a lot to my understanding of how humans, uh, humans work. Um, camming has shown me my own kinks, fetishes, desires, and peculiarities. I spent a lot of time making sure I am managing my own well-being so that I can bring joy and fulfillment to others. So I take a lot of time not camming. So you might be seeing this video and be like, bitch, you haven't been on in a week. <laughs> yes, it's because I'm trying to make sure that I stay safe, sane, and happy um, so that I can create like a good show. And also, um, balance. So like, I work on other platforms as well. And I, and I, that has only come to fruition in the past two years. My first three years of camming, I was really, really always on cam, like a lot. Um, full time, I guess you would say. But now it's kind of more part time and I'm finding balance with other things which has been important for me during this like transitionary period I feel like I'm in. But I'm always open to going back to camming full time. I, I it's something that I really do enjoy. Um, one thing I learned this past year since I've been camming without the influence of drugs or alcohol, I'm one year sober, not to brag, but to brag. Um, in order to maintain a high sex drive, I must stay connected to my body through movement and I need to connect with others in real life in a meaningful way. So like a lot of people say like the opposite of addiction is connection and I find that so true. And I find like that starts with yourself. Like that starts with falling back. Like for me, it started with like falling back in love with like working out and moving my body and doing all these other things. And that helped me increase my sex drive as well so that I can still perform <laughs> on camp. Um, because yeah, like weed really helps you, but that wasn't like, that wasn't, um, and a viable option for me anymore. And I needed to come up with a different strategy so that I could keep going. Right. Camming can be very isolating when you're an introvert with anxiety. So like 
And I feel like a lot of jobs nowadays are you work from home and you have to force yourself to like go be social and like make friends because you're not thrust into the world to have to make money. You can do it from your own home and there's Amazon and good things can just get delivered to your door. And if you never wanted to leave your house, you could still do that and still be alive. But we ha like I had to learn how to to go, to go and do, do the scary things, like having conversations with people, for real. Because after college, when I stopped going to college, <clears throat> I like didn't really socialize um, until I moved to Vegas. And that like prompted me to reach out to community, which brings me back to my script. When, when I started getting involved, when I started getting involved in the community, opportunity opened to make new friends and have new experiences. Um, like the conventions, like, ah, like meeting like people that I looked up to in the community for so long by going to the conventions and seeing them work and seeing, you know, all these amazing, wonderful people doing all these amazing, wonderful, inspiring things. And it really like brightens, like if you were like, because I was like a dark cloud almost of like isolation for me for a while, but like going and having those experiences was so freaking important. And I'm gonna continue to go make connections in that way. Cause I think, I think that it can only be good. Um, camming has allowed me to travel whenever the mood strikes. That's my favorite part about camming and why I don't know how, like, if I'll ever quit because, <laughs> because, um, there is nothing like just deciding on a random Friday, like, oh my God, I want to go, you know, I want to go be in the mountains somewhere in a hot tub and then you go on Airbnb or, you know, whatever and you book it and you're, you're in the mountains in a hot tub on cam. Shit like that. Um, never gets old. <laughs> That's always like, it feeds the soul, right? It, travel for me feeds the soul. And being able to go see the people that I love, see the places that I love and still be able to work. Love it and appreciate it so freaking much. At this point, I have now attended three conventions with my main campsite, Chatterbait, as one of their models, which introduced me to a whole new realm of possibilities and interests. A lot of people watching this might be waiting for the other shoe to drop. I want to hear about all the negative aspects of camming. I see no negative aspects for my life personally go back to the script because I'm not making any sense. I think boundaries are super important in this line of work and it is best to set them early and often. I've had a few bad experiences camming. However, I was intoxicated, so I can't really blame camming for, <laughs> for the experience not being the best. <clears throat> now, I do want to stop and like, this has been like a mm, like kissing camming's ass video so far. <laughs> if you came here for, you know, like the tea. Okay, here it is. Um, I'm gonna talk about the worst thing that I've ever had to deal with on cam and so that nobody else has to deal with it if you're watching this because um, men will try to scam you. So I want to stop and mention a scam I fell for that a lot of new girls fall for and I've heard other people fell for it too. So let me just bring it to your attention. I don't know if this is still happening because when it happened to me, it was five years ago, but if it's still happening, I'm warning you now. My first ever show, I was asked to do a private and I didn't know. Okay, so this was on me. I didn't know how the site worked and I didn't know how privates worked. Um, I was basically tricked into a password show, which is like a private show, except you don't get paid. So yeah, I ended up doing a whole free show for a, a gray user and losing my new tag, which is something 
that you get like when you first start camming to like help boost your cam in the algorithm. Um, anyway, that day I worked for like two hours. I made like 18 tokens, which is less than a dollar. Um, it really sucked. It felt like, it felt sucky. You know, it felt bad. It didn't feel like a good time um, afterwards. Cause I was like, oh, I didn't make that money. I'm an idiot. And I felt like an idiot and I was all sad. Um, anyway, I tell this story as a warning to new girls, if you're watching, be on the lookout, be on the lookout, <laughs> don't get scammed. Um, if something feels like a scam, it's a scam. L basically, um, if somebody's saying, oh, can I pay you on Cash App? It's a scam. Um, oh, can I blah, blah, blah? It's a scam. Like sometimes there are people who will go out of their way to go on your other sites and tip you and buy videos and things like that and, and buy things off your wish list. But if they're trying to like buy something off your wish list to get you to do something on cam, it's a scam. If it feels like a scam, it 100% is a scam. You don't need proof. If it just, if it kind of feels like it's, it's, they're scamming you, they're scamming you. Anyway, it happened five years ago and I'm over it now, although it hurt my feelings at the time. I still pursued camming after that because <laughs> I confided in somebody and they're just like, don't let that stop you. Like you were so gung ho on this whole thing. Don't let that, don't like let it stop you. You just made one mistake. Like, and, I, and so I did, I kept pursuing camming. Um, Cause it had me really like interested in what was possible, like what I could build out of it. So more, my last little closing thing that I want to say. Camming is one of those things that will always keep you guessing. Is today the day where no one talks to me and I make $10 in three hours as I sing silly little songs into my computer <laughs> to keep myself from going insane? Or will tonight be the night someone tips my highest tip ever with thousands of viewers in the room? Every time you log on, you don't know. It could be either, either or, something in between. You never know what's gonna happen. And that's like kind of like the fun of it. <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed my first five years camming and look forward to five more. Thanks for joining me. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>